What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Red Drive Aviation. I really hope each and every one of you are all having a fantastic day today. And today we're going to be taking a look at my North American carriers that are not in the United States. So this is going to include Mexico, Canada, and the Caribbean. I really hope each and every one of you are excited for today's video. And without any further delay, we have a really cool assortment of aircraft and I'm very excited to get into all these. So without any further delay, let's see how this collection has progressed from the last time we took a look at it. And let's see what's going on. So here we go. We're going to get started here with Mexico as we'll start with not that aircraft, uh, Air Mexico completely uh, got past me there. Uh, this is a retro aircraft, but since it's here, we might as well take a look at it and it's a new addition. This is the Aero Mexico Doubles DC-8. This is quite a unique aircraft. Thank you, Aviation LES, for doing the trade here and certainly a unique one, one that I wouldn't have expected to add here to the collection, but the airline collectible shows throw you click curveballs and LES wanted to trade it, so that certainly does the job and certainly a unique addition. So it looks good, quite a cool mold and definitely glad to have that one right there. Next, we have the Aero Mexico Connect Ember ERJ-190. This is an awesome aircraft and I've been really glad to have it for Dallas. Excited for the main line of DFW, however, but this will still be a pivotal asset as they continue to fly them for quite some time. So looking forward to seeing what happens with that aircraft in the future and overall definitely a cool one in the fleet in my opinion. Here's the Aero Mexico Boeing 737-700 that I have. I just bought it because I thought it looked cool at the time and it still looks cool to this day. So cool one definitely to have here and I think it looks really good. So quite a unique offering, but it certainly gets the job done. So that's uh, exactly what we're looking for right there. Next, we're gonna take a look at this Aero Mexico Boeing 737-800. Perfectly prepared for the DFW mainline, luckily, so that's awesome. It's a great aircraft from NG, definitely glad to have it. Ironically enough, I did have the Gemini Dits version of this previously and did sell that in favor of this one. And it's been a great addition over the last three years. So overall, a great aircraft. Can't believe it's getting that old already, but there goes time on you boys. Here's the Aero Mexico Boeing 757-200, another one that I thought looked really cool. You're also gonna notice that it has a little tape mark right there. That's because I used it as a, a graveyard aircraft for a very long time, but I took that off, of course, to represent its true fashion. I thought about selling this one. I think I'll go ahead and keep it. It does look quite cool. And overall, I think it's a really good aircraft. So definitely glad to have it here. And this one looks really good right there. Then we're now going to take a look at the Velars Airbus A320 fleet. So here we go with the Velars fleet. So here's the 320 with Sharklets, or sorry, with fin tips first. This is a good aircraft. Definitely glad to have it. It's provided some nice variety at the airports that it flies to, and my uh, air and on my channel rather, I should say. And with the anticipation of the San Jose del Cabo project to eventually get underway, hopefully in the future, we will have that aircraft to go in that airport. So glad to have this one, and certainly a cool one right there. Now we're gonna take it on to the other side as we have a wide array of aircraft. So next we'll have the Velar Service E320 with Sharklets. This is a really good aircraft by Aero Classics. Definitely very glad to have it. It's been a nice addition here in the collection. I think it's proved very powerful with the variety that it encompasses. So overall, very glad to have that aircraft and it looks really good in the fleet. Then we have the Aero Classics Airbus H320 with the purple engines. I'm really surprised that nobody's done one uh, outside of Aero Classics, but I'm very glad that I got their version of it as it's also been a critical component considering how many of these they have now. So definitely very glad to have this one. It looks really good and it's been very nice at my various model airports. So certainly very glad to have that one right there. Now we have the Velar Service E20 Neo and this has the normal engines. This aircraft, of course I got uh, uh, like in 2019 and it's been a nice aircraft as well. So I'm not sure I might sell it at some point. We'll see. It's still a great aircraft. Don't get me wrong. The aircraft didn't do any wrongs. It's just, that I have all these Velarises and I'm not sure if I really, really need them, but certainly glad to have this one as well. And it's a great aircraft. So certainly a nice aircraft right there. Then we have the Velaris Airbus A321 with shark clips. This is a really good aircraft as well by Phoenix. Uh, very glad to have Velaris with their 321. It looks really good. And overall, I think that it's quite a nice aircraft with the mold. They do a good job on theirs and the landing gear is quite unique as well. So very glad to have that one too. Now we're gonna take it on to the Velaris Airbus A321 Neo. This is a really awesome aircraft. One of my favorites, hands down, with the engine and just overall combo. Unfortunately, they didn't get the raccoon mask. However, it still looks absolutely amazing. So this aircraft looks really good. Very glad that I got this one. And who knows, maybe Inju will do it and I'll replace it in the future. But for now, the Gemini version is proving very powerful and it's been quite a nice aircraft so far in the collection. So very glad to have that one right there. Now we get into our three Viva Aerobus offerings. Starting right here with this Airbus E320 with fence tips. Another nice aircraft by Phoenix. The mold's really cool. Got a very fair deal on these and I'm glad it did because there's not been a release since. So very glad that I got them when I did and they have been very useful, not only for current projects, but will be for future projects too. So very glad to have the Velaris E320 with fence tips and A320 with sharklets that also looks really nice too. It is a very beautiful aircraft and the sharklets accompanied the aircraft quite well. So overall, a great uh, aircraft right there. 
And then Aero Classics, we have the Airbus A321 Neo, which is quite a nice aircraft. Unfortunately, I lost my nose tires, but luckily the engines still do look pretty good. So this aircraft's still really nice, even though it's not the prettiest in the world, it definitely gets the job done. At least we have the raccoon mask on this one. So that's certainly awesome to see, and glad to have that aircraft right there. Now we get into our Air Canada fleet. So here we have the CRJ-705 I've had for a very long time. You can definitely see that in the titles. But overall, this is a great aircraft and the two, my only two-faced in the fleet. So definitely has been a great aircraft and another one that I just liked, uh, bought because I thought it looked cool way back when and certainly has been a very useful aircraft in my collection to this point and will continue to be. Then we have the recent edition of the CRJ-900. This is a really nice aircraft and excited to hopefully get to use this in some sort of reoccurring basis, excluding great planes. So hopefully maybe like Omaha or some airport that might get this again at some point. But nevertheless, this is a really cool aircraft and it looks really nice. So hopefully I can find an airport for it at some point, but nevertheless, it will continue to be used as much as possible, but it looks really nice. Here's the ERJ-175 that's been really useful over the last four years. I'm very glad to have this one. And now going on year five, this aircraft will continue to be a very useful asset and excited once again, hopefully find additional uses for it. And maybe one day I'll get the 1200 enhanced winglet recall. So we'll have to see. Next, we have the Air Canada 737 MAX 8. This has been a great aircraft as well. I really like the livery on this aircraft and hopefully I can get the Wi-Fi box back soon. I have no idea where it is, but it's gotta be somewhere in this room. So overall, still a really great aircraft and definitely very happy to have it at this time. We have this Air Canada Airbus E220 300. So here we have the normal livery to start. This aircraft looks really nice. I really like the combination on this aircraft too. So overall, it's a fantastic looker and certainly excited to see how you can utilize this aircraft again in the near future and long term. So that'll be quite nice right there. Then we have this Air Canada Airbus E20-300 in the retro throwback paint scheme. This one of my favorites, definitely glad to have this one too. I was really happy to see them paint this one and I thought it was worth getting the model of and it's been a really cool aircraft in the fleet. So overall, this aircraft looks really good and excited to see once again how we can uh, enhance its usage here in the near future. And lastly, for Air Canada, before we get to their wide body later, we have this Airbus A321 Rouge. This is a really cool aircraft. Sad to lose the antenna for it, but what can you do? This has still been a great asset, and Rouge is quite a unique brand, so definitely glad to have this one. And excited to see what I can do with it in the future, like I said. Following that, we have this WestJet Boeing 737-600 to kick off the WestJet fleet. WestJet's quite a unique airline, and I hope to get more aircraft from them in the future, but the 600's been a great one. This is the Panda release, so certainly a great job. Exclusive to the West Coast, or sorry, uh, rather Prairie Diecast way back, uh, probably three years ago or so at this point. So definitely cool aircraft and excited once again to see what it can do here in the future. Then we have the 737-700. This has been a really great asset to utilize and I'm excited to see if it can make appearances at more additional airports in the future, but certainly has been used very well so far and excited to see what it can go uh, with it here in the future. Here's the 737-800 with the blended winglets, uh, another aircraft that I bought just because I liked it and certainly still been a really great aircraft here so far. So once again, excited to see where it's gonna go from here. Love the black visor there on the nose and it's a great aircraft. And then I get the NG Scimitar winglet because yes, so this one's been great as well. I really like the Scimitars on this one and excited to see what kind of WestJet planes I get in the future. So maybe a Boeing 787, we'll have to see. I did have Q400 for a long time. Unfortunately, that broke, but hey, we'll see what we can do, so it's okay. Here's a Swoop Boeing 737-800. I think I'll keep this one in honor of Swoop. It's really sad that they, unfortunately, bit the bullet, but what can we do? So we have their 737-800 to represent them here. So what can we do? And here we have the Sunwing Boeing 737-800. This aircraft's really nice and I really like the orange on it. So this one was a really cool one to get from NG and very similar to the Swoop, this will be a very uh, honorable aircraft considering their situation right now. So hopefully we'll get the best for them, but nevertheless, we'll have to do what we can with their current situation. And then we have the Flare Boeing 737 Max 8. Hopefully they'll be able to survive. I was very tempted to get the Lynx aircraft and I'm very glad that I did because unfortunately they just recently turned it in. So hopefully Flare will be in a better spot. So this is still a great aircraft by Gemini Jets and excited to see where Flare is gonna go from here and hopefully they don't bite the bullet either. So very glad to have them in the fleet and they look really good. 
Finally, moving on to our non-Canadian aircraft, we're going back south, this time to the Caribbean. We're gonna find this Cayman Airways Boeing 737 MAX. This is a very beautiful aircraft. I've seen it a couple of times, and first time seeing it in Miami, I just couldn't pass up getting the model at the airplane shop. So that's what we did, not only for that aircraft, but also for the Caribbean Airlines Boeing 737 MAX 8. So these two are quite the pair. I did a really cool review on them, so definitely check it out if you're interested. But beautiful liveries right here with their various characteristics. Of course, you got the Cayman flag on theirs, and then you got the bird on the Caribbean tail. Definitely screams that area and very excited to see uh, the future of that and hope to go there sometime in that area at some point. So for now, looking very good here with these offerings though and excited to see how my Caribbean fleet can enhance. And just for fun, I'll throw in three Echtas that aren't really accompanied to the region, but why not? So going a little bit farther south, here's the Copa Airlines 737-800. This was a nice aircraft to get in the trade and definitely proves powerful for my project with great planes. So it's been the perfect fit and definitely glad to get this in a convenient manner. So that's one's been quite nice. We got the Gold Boeing 737 MAX 8. This aircraft proved to be very good too. Uh, that's actually the logo on it. I thought that was a scratch, but that's just the logo on the aircraft. But anyway, this aircraft's been quite nice. Uh, I believe I got this at, was this at Airliners? No, maybe I got it at the DFW Airline Collectibles show. Anyway, though, it's been a great addition and love the silver engines on it. Overall, it looks really good, so that's been a great buy so far, in my opinion. And we have the Avianca Airbus A320 in the TACA retro colors. Whether I'll get the standard delivery to replace it or not, we'll see, but I just wanted to get one uh, to finally get a newer aircraft in here. So that's what we got with this aircraft, and I'll have to see. I did see a lowercase a the other day at Boston, of all places, so definitely uh, looks interesting. I'd prefer the uppercase, so I might just go ahead and get the uppercase, but again, we're evaluating that situation as we speak. Two more Air Canada's rather, excuse me, before we conclude today's video. Here we have the Boeing 767-300 Cargo. This is a great aircraft. I was able to get it fixed up and unfortunately dropped and the landing gears still do look, look quite bad, but you can't really notice from here. It's when we get here that you can really see how tough they look, but still, they can sit straight and you wouldn't have noticed if I wouldn't have told you. So overall, I'm happy with the byproducts. So that aircraft's looking really good and very glad to have that one. And last but certainly not least, we have this Air Canada Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner. This aircraft looks really nice and definitely very glad to have it. Got with the Prairie Diecast video back in 2020. It's been really great at Great Plains and the other projects that I've used it for. So very excited to see what projects it could be used for in the future. And overall, this is a great aircraft to have. So I'm really happy with it. So that will do it here for the North American Airlines fleet video. I really hope that all of you enjoyed this. This is quite a fleet and definitely excited to see how it can grow in the future. I definitely want to continue to get new airlines that I don't have yet. Lynx was a great example until they bit the bullet, but definitely more Caribbean carriers like, you know, Bahamas Air and some of those definitely wouldn't mind touching up the Mexico and uh, Canadian fleet, which is certainly coming along well, but even like one more WestJet would be quite cool. Air Canada is really in a pretty good spot until, uh, you know, there's really not there. You know, we can make moves. I've thought about getting like the A321 before and some others like that. And I'm sure some of those will happen at some point. But for now, I really like where this fleet stands. And I'm really excited to see where the fleet will go with those particular aircraft. You know, there's still plenty of work to be done here with this fleet and really excited. And I definitely want to build up on that Central America, South America region. So we can do a video on that sometime. Definitely have to get a LATAM. Got really close over Black Friday, but definitely have to get a LATAM. Really close to buying one to clarify, but just didn't happen. So definitely got to get a LATAM. Definitely got to get some other aircraft. I have got Azul, which is cool. So that will be in the international fleet by type. So stay on the lookout for that. But overall, this fleet is coming along quite nicely, and I'm very excited to see what happens with it here in the near future. So with all that being said, everybody, that'll do it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. My name is Jordan Dave Aviation. Take it easy, everybody. Stay safe. Just process. Do you love and love you do? My name is Jordan Dave Aviation. I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon as Jordan Dave Aviation is signing off.